and welcome back. Uh, in the workshop this week, I'm going to take you on the start of a journey through my last ever big build. All that's coming up next. Ooh, right, that's a bit oops. Um, it sounds very dramatic, doesn't it? My last big build. Uh, in reality, I've been stepping back from the big builds for a little while. This is pretty much the last one that I've had on my books. Uh, first started discussing this back in uh, August or September or thereabouts, and it just worked out well for the clients for me to do it while they were away on holiday. They, they're just back. So for the last couple of weeks, uh, if you've followed me on Instagram, uh, you'll have seen some of this build coming through. Um, I, Because it's my last big build, and I've known these clients for a long, long time, um, because it's the last big build, I've shot a lot of video on this, over 800 gigs of 4K video. So there'll be a few videos coming through on this, uh, including the, uh, the, the build here in the workshop for the carcasses and for the doors, uh, the install as well on site, uh, and in this video, we're going to talk about the prep work, the, the work you do before you get to doing the build, before you even get to doing the cut list, which involved templating the space uh, and what you do with the template afterwards. I, I have done a longer video about the templating process, uh, which is on my Patreon channel. Uh, feel free to go and take the, uh, a quick look at that if this tickles your fancy at patreon.com forward slash 10 minute workshop. But in this one, we're going to touch a little bit on the uh, templating process, but then what you actually do with it afterwards. Let's talk about this this job to start with. It's a fairly straightforward uh, wardrobe and shelves job, at least that's how it started, with a double wardrobe carcass in the centre. This is an aloft conversion, they call it a mansard conversion. Uh, so you end up with a very steep angle on one side, so there's a bit of a fiddly angled unit wardrobe unit, shelf unit to go in there, and also a really skinny little bookcase uh, uh, in another alcove on the other side of the chimney breast. They were originally designed as open shelves and then the clients decided that they want them all enclosed with doors. Uh, that does come back to bite me later on <laughs> in the install, as you'll see. But other than that, it's essentially a fairly straightforward double carcass. Um, the single angled carcass, which is a bit tricky, and with the angled door as well, and then a skinny little bookcase type. Um, the double carcass is laid out mostly to hanging space with some uh, open shelves which are adjustable. Uh, in the bookcase they are adjustable shelves apart from a fixed centre shelf. And uh, again in the angled one the uh, shelves at the base are adjustable but obviously fixed as you go further up, although it did make the the upper one removable just in case they had tall skinny things to go in there. Um, this is video and this series is a little bit different to what you may have seen before because I have shot, because it's in a very small space, I have shot an awful lot of it on my little sort of action camera uh, type of thing so it is all a little bit looser and the quality, particularly the audio quality, won't quite be what you expect from me. Uh, that's how it is sometimes, you know, it's just just roll with it. Uh, the whole thing is a little bit looser and a little bit more casual. Uh, so there'll be several videos coming through, but this particular one it was all about the prep work, the templating, and, uh, and what you do with that template afterwards. Let's, let's uh, dive right in and uh, we'll take a look at the uh, very first video uh, that I shot uh, in the space as I was just about getting ready to template. Okay, so this is a rare treat to be able to actually get into an empty space which is genuinely completely empty before I start making stuff uh, because we've got this slightly awkward shape of putting wardrobes into uh, this alcove to the right with the uh, sloping ceiling, sloping wall and this teeny little skinny alcove to the left so the shelves in there and in order to try, although this is a relatively Although this is a relatively new build, uh, up in the loft space, a mansard roof they call it. Um, I'm going to be happier if I can template this space, which is what I'm going to do now with a load of little bits of stick and some glue. Uh, and then at least it gives me a, a proper idea of the amount of space, the exact space that we've got 
to play with. Right, well, let's move in. Back to our clear space as it was before. Time to try and shoehorn those <laughs> templates into the van there. Quite long. I think they'll fit, sort of. Whether they go in in one piece remains to be seen. But yeah, as I say, a bit of a luxury to be able to have this kind of empty space to play with. Uh, but I shall take advantage of it where I can. Um, I may even actually make the plinths and just bring those in. Get those fitted first before I start fitting the other stuff because it's just one less thing to have to do. Anyway, enough of that. Uh, time to get back to the workshop. Get my cut list sorted. That can go in. I'll have that early next week and then I can start assembly and machining and painting and all that other good stuff. So anyway, what I'm doing here is I've got the template of the shape set up. Uh, I've marked out where the double carcass is. I'll, I want to put the uh, the carcass edge for this angled set of shelves in, so that then I can figure out where, how high these shelves are going to go. So I need, so I've got an idea of how wide they need to be because fairly obviously you know, they're getting wider the lower down you get. So that's the plan. Anyway, as soon as my glue gun is heated up, I'll just pop a, a dab of glue on there, get that fixed up top and bottom, and then we can get these uh, roughly measured in where we want them to be. There's my plans. Okay. I love a bit of hot glue, haven't you? <laughs> Great stuff. Okay. Okay, so this bottom of this is the bottom of the carcass, and that's a piece of 18 mil. So that's going to give me the equivalent of the top of the carcass. And I know that I've drawn the shelf unit to be 900 mil up from that. Absolute top. So then we need a shelf across there, 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 and up. To do that, we need some magic. And in this instance, magic takes the form of a laser level. I've already leveled up the template and clamped it to the bench. And the laser, which is really hard to see in this video, unfortunately, does give me an easy way to level up the little bits of stick that represent where the shelves will need to be.
and with everything in place in the angled unit and the measurements of the angled shelves added to the cut list, I can add a few bits of bracing to the left-hand double wardrobe template. And you'd think that'd be the bulk of the donkey work done, wouldn't you? All I've got to do is give that cut list to my timber yard and they'll transfer it into millimeter perfect boards, precision cut on a panel saw that costs more than my house. <sighs> it doesn't always work out that way, unfortunately. As you'll see, I'm gonna run the last couple of minutes of this video uh, with my Patreon credits, uh, just to say thank you very much to all of my Patreon supporters, and don't forget, there's a, an extended version of the uh, templating part of this video on my Patreon channel. Go and check that out at patreon.com forward slash 10 minute workshop if that particularly interests you. The rest of these videos will come through in this series when they're ready. This isn't going to be a special weekly thing. So uh, the best way not to miss one of those videos, of course, is to subscribe to the channel. Uh, and don't forget to hit that bell and then you'll be notified whenever I post something new. But that's it for this week. Thanks for watching. Uh, watch the next couple of minutes uh, and I'll see you next time. Take care. Ah, so supposedly last other wardrobe job, last other big jobs that I want to do. Going reasonably well so far, all the template done and everything. Got my cut list sorted based on this, needed to get this done before I get the cut list done. Took it down the timber yard to drop it off, expecting to pick it up Tuesday or Wednesday next week. It's not that much, five sheets, uh, five sheets of 18 and three of six and uh guy behind the counter says oh do you want the good news or the bad news i said okay uh, let's do the bad news he says uh we're looking at a two-week lead time two weeks uh and there's, no, and there's no good news basically uh they've got a big a big job in they're doing a big hotel job they're just running the panel saw 24 hours a day more or less running egger boards through and they haven't got any space. So now suddenly, instead of having a couple of days, yeah, fairly quiet, pleasant weekend, and a couple of days early next week to do a few other little bits and pieces, suddenly I've got to run down to the yard tomorrow, pick up the 18 mil so I can get that cut over the weekend and get the six and the 22 on Monday to get that done. It's just, just not what I need. But nothing, nothing else I can do. Um, I've tried a couple of other people. There's a company called Cutrights, who are well regarded, but they they say they work to an eight day lead time, so stuff like that. There's a few other yards around, but their their panel cutting is. They've got a bloke on a panel saw that will rip a sheet of MDF in half for you, sort of. But nobody that does the kind of, you know, precision cutting that my guys do. Uh, so I'm a bit stuffed, I'm a bit stymied on this. And I just don't see any way around it other than cutting the stuff myself. So there goes the weekend. Yeah, anyway. Friday night. Time to go and get a drink, I think. God. What a start to our last job, eh?